Now, personally, I think the Chihuahua gecko has to be the most beautiful out of all the new Caledonian species. This amazing mossy camouflage pattern could not be beat. However, just like with most animals, it's very important to know the care of the animal before actually getting one, and it's a good thing that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Today, I decided to break down the care of the Chihuahua gecko in five easy topics, that being the enclosure size, heating and lighting, humidity, substrate, and then finally, what to fill the enclosure with. Stick around while we talk about the amazing Chihuahua gecko and the care you need to care for your very own Chihuahua gecko. Let's get into it. Kicking things off, we're going to start with the first topic at hand, which is going to be number one, the enclosure size you need for your Chihuahua gecko. You start out with a baby Chihuahua gecko. I tend to keep them much like we keep our Lichianus, and that's going to be in a very small enclosure as it's growing up. Remember, we always want to make sure these animals feel secure and safe in their home. And although a big enclosure would be absolutely amazing in the keeper's eyes, for the kept, it means a big space that constantly has to be fear and being protected by. That's why personally, I decide to use six quart shoebox bins or the equivalent of that at size, so something like maybe a five gallon aquarium, something around there that makes sure that it's safe, you can decorate it very nicely, make it very snug and secure for the animal so it makes sure that it feels safe inside that home while it grows up. But of course these Chihuahuas do not stay babies forever, and as they grow they will need bigger setups. Personally for an adult enclosure, I recommend nothing less than a 20 tall or the 18 by 18 by 24. However, once the gecko is full size, bigger can always be better, and we can always give these animals more space, which brings a good topic in our next segment, which is the sponsorship for today. And real quick guys, before we continue on with the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, Zen Habitats. Zen Habitats is a company that makes custom made enclosures for your reptiles. These enclosures come in a variety of different sizes, starting as small as something like a 2x2x2 all the way up to a 4x2x4. But in my opinion, the best part about Zen Habitats is going to be the custom ability you have. See, with Zen Habitats, they have what they call extension kits, which means this 4x2x4 and this 4x2x4 can be combined and then making a 4 4 by 4 by 4. The possibilities of different sizes are absolutely endless. I guess as long as your parameter is at least two feet. But other than that, I mean, you can make them as big as you want to go. You want a 20 by 10 by 12, go for it as long as you get the Zen Habitats. And really, I think the best selling point for Zen Habitats is going to be their fast shipping. Now, when you talk about other PVC companies or companies like Zen Habitats, you're going to be waiting for six weeks to, in some cases, seven months. I've waited for PVC enclosure for seven months. It's absolutely ridiculous. Not with Zen Habitats. In their in-stock items, you can expect to get that enclosure within the week. What more can I say? Fast shipping, great enclosures at a great price. If you guys want to check out some more information about Zen Habitats, I have my link right down there in the description. Your boy gets a small cutback if you do. I very much appreciate it. Let's get back into the video. Moving on, let's get into the second topic at hand, which is going to be number two, the heating and lighting requirements for your Chihuahua Gecko. Comes to the heating of the Chihuahua Gecko, they do like it a little bit warmer than what you would think when you think New Caledonian. Personally, for me, we have the temperatures over here set around 76 to 77 degrees degrees as an ambient temp and I actually used somewhat of a basking level to make sure they get somewhere around that 80 to 82 degrees somewhere where they can be able to bats to digest their food a little easier and so on to, to summarize it pretty quickly what you really need is a pretty high 70s in the ambient and then a basking point that reaches somewhere between that 80 to 82 degrees that's gonna be the best for them while they can do with lesser temps it's not the best you can give obviously we want to do the best for every reptile so make sure to add some sort of basking point for your animal as far as the second part of this which is the lighting section while uvb is not a necessity of course anything in the wild that can be able to use uvb will benefit in some way shape or form from it uh, personally i actually combined my lighting and heating section into one i actually use a t5 high output uvb for these guys and while it isn't the traditional basking bulb and won't get as warm as one the fact that i have my building or the room that they are in right now in the high 70s it actually is able to bump it just a couple degrees to get that 80 to 82 where we really want them for uh, designated basking point. As I mentioned, it is not a complete necessity to have it. You will not see any negative effects if you're not providing UVB. What I will say, if you aren't providing it, make sure to have some sort of day and night cycle for the animal, whether that be just using the lights in your house or some sort of full spectrum light, whether that be the basking bulb, an LED, something of that nature. And lastly, the best heating source when it comes to basking bulbs is obviously going to be your standard basking light, whether that be a PAR 38 flood light, the multiple reptile basking lights they have. Just use a white one. I, I don't know why they make the colored ones still white. You want nice light like it's daytime. The, the sun is not red. The sun is not blue. The sun is like... Y yellow? 
But if you, for some reason, opt out of using a basking light, a ceramic heat emitter would work or a reptile heating panel. Just make sure that panel is plugged into a basking light. And if you're using one of these options, make sure you have some sort of full spectrum area lighting to make sure they understand that day and night cycle, as we explained a little earlier. Moving on, let's get into the third topic at hand, which is going to be number three, the humidity requirements for your Chihuahua gecko. Much like the more common cousin, the crested gecko, these guys also come from New Caledonia. And what do we see in New Cal? That's gonna be humid. It is a humid place. It's a tropical paradise. I assume, I've actually never seen pictures of New Caledonia. That being said, that these guys need relatively high humidity. That humidity percentage being somewhere between the 60 to 80%. Now when I say 60 to 80%, I do not mean you wanna keep it at, let's say 72%, 24-7. No, what you are gonna to wanna to have is a humidity gradient. So when you're missing that enclosure, doing whatever you do to raise the humidity, here's a video right here that goes into some ways you can increase your humidity. That is gonna spike that to where we want being that 80% and then as the day goes on it's gonna dip lower and lower to around that 60% until you spray it again and it goes up and down and up and down and for the rest of the gecko's life. Remember, we never want our humidity to be doing this, where it's just a straight percentage all the way through. We always want our ups and downs, much like you would find in the wild. All right, boys, I'm sorry for the interruption. I just want to talk a little bit real quick about the merch. If you're looking for a great way to support the channel while getting some absolutely badass merch, I mean, just check this out. We got Cresty in the front, Toke in the back. Absolutely incredible. But hey, if crested geckos don't float your boat, which I mean, how can they not? But not to worry, we have a bunch of other incredible designs going from geckos, other geckos, m m well, more geckos. I think there's a chameleon one. If you guys want some more information, the band is right down there. It really helps me out. It helps me keep doing all the full-time stuff that I've been doing, living my dream. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Let's get back to the video. Well, boys and girls, it's just come to my attention that I, I did a bit of a goof up in the beginning of the video. N number four is the diet. It, we're going to be talking about the diet of the animal. Substrate goes into number five, what to fill the enclosure with. It's with that being said, let's get into our next topic. Number four, the diet requirements for the Chihuahua Gecko. When it comes to the diet of the Chihuahua, it's gonna be somewhat similar to Crested Geckos, but a little bit different, and let me explain. While yes, the Crested Gecko diet that we usually feed to our Cresties is gonna work the exact same with the Chihuahua, these guys do seem to be more protein, more protein requirements. Just with that being said, that you will need to feed a mix of the Crested Gecko diet while also feeding some sort of protein, that being crickets, roaches, uh, insects, or invertebrates, or half invertebrates, vertebrates half pre-made jelly food and that's pretty much all about that there's a number of things you can feed for chihuahua crickets roaches uh super worms black soldier fly larva the list goes on and on make sure to keep in a variety of that food never feed just one as a full staple variety is the spice of life and it's no different from these guys right here currently our feeding ratio when it comes to our chihuahua geckos are going to be twice a week the crested gecko food and then twice a week insects so pretty much we do crested gecko one day skip the next day crickets skip the next day crested gecko food skip cricket it goes on to something like that that way we make sure that they're getting a lot of protein, but also the vitamins and nutrients of the Crested Gecko food that they also desperately need. Moving on, boys and girls, let's get to the last topic at hand, which is going to be my personal favorite when I get a new reptile, and that is going to be number five, what to fill the enclosure with. Just like the Blizzard Cups, you guys get a Dairy Queen. Chihuahua geckos are exactly the same. You can flip them up and they'll still go. And that's because Chihuahua geckos are an arboreal gecko. They like to be up high and in the trees, not really on the ground, unlike most terrestrial species. It's with that being said that you want to provide a multitude of climbing areas for the gecko. It can range from your different branches, cork barks, cork hides, or really whatever you can find out there that can make sure the animal will be able to climb and get high like it wants to. So the substrate, as we explained a little bit earlier, these guys do are a humidity reliant animal. Best way to add some humidity is going to have a nice deep tropical substrate, nothing like sand or clay or anything like that. Personally, for me, I use the Dirt Daddy mix over by, well, D Dirt Daddy. They use a number of different substrate mediums to create the perfect mix for the humidity requirements that tropical animals love. Other than that, some other stuff I use is going to be a topsoil sand and pot, pot, pot peat, peat moss, peat moss mix. Uh, there's also a number of stuff you can get at your local pet co's and stuff like that, that being cocoa fiber and uh, cypress mulch, uh, repti soil. I never get these anymore because they're just way too expensive. I can get a 40 bag of topsoil for four bucks or I can get like a small bag of cocoa 
cocoa fiber for like 20. It makes no sense, just get some topsoil. Lastly, when it comes to making sure that the gecko feels safe and secure in its home, I have a mix of real plants and fo fake foliage. Uh, for the real plant, I just use pothos. I use pothos for every gecko. It's so easy, it's unkillable. It loves tropical environments like gecko enclosures, so it works out perfectly. It's got a pot thing you get your usual like Walmart, Home Depot, or really just any local nursery, and it just grows. I don't do anything with it, and it just grows like crazy and takes over enclosures in like six months. It's absolutely awesome. Standard fake plants at your pet stores, anything like that. I always have a few laying around, so I add a little bit. Just give a nice mix of fakeness and realness at the same time. I want the gecko to feel like it's in the wild, but have it know at the same time it's not, and it will never be in the wild because I took it 18 generations ago, and it's been bred in captivity. So while it can feel the real plant like it would in the wild, it knows with the fake one right there, it will never know the real thing. Dang, that got dark really fast. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. As always, thank you for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye.